Hi, welcome to The Coaching Game. I'm Laurie Lawson, and tonight my guest is longtime guest and dear, dear friend, Judith Costa. Hey, Judith. Hi, Laurie. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here with you. Yeah, I'm so happy <laughs> you're here. She's back in town and, and doing all kinds of exciting things. Um, so, Judith, tell us, uh, d as, you, as you can see at the bottom of the page, we have Judith's title is Unconditional Love Coach. Tell us what that is and how you got there, because last time you were on, that wasn't really your title, was it? <laughs> Well, I was, uh, or I'm still called a soulmate expert, but I moved from trying to help people to find true love mm -hmm. to help people to love themselves no matter what. Mm -hmm. And we, we can talk about this, it has been a transition because it's really necessary to love yourself, to be able to manifest the life you want and also to find the soulmate uh, you are looking for. But. Uh, now it's more than that. It's it's just uh, like this desire to be kind of a, an ambassador of love, mm -hmm. but not the love that we understand. Like I give uh, love to you and you give love to me. It's more about I just give love, and let's see what happens. What kind of world? With no we expectation. Can oh, how cool No conditions. Would that be? Yeah. No expectations. Yeah. No sacrifices. <laughs> just love. Ah, nice, nice. And this is unconditional love. Oh, okay. So it's like it's when you decide that I hear you saying that okay, there's there's two parts of this, and and let me just tell you, Judith does workshops. She does um, how to find your soulmate, which I'm sure is very popular, and also how to love yourself or how yeah. to be in love with yourself, or fall in love with fall yourself, fall in love with right, yourself, right? Yeah. Even better, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which do you find are the most popular? Uh, this is part of what has been happening. At the beginning, I created the f uh, How to Find Your Soulmate, and the self-love was just uh, like a little piece in the middle of the workshop where we can talk about this. But I realized that what my clients really needed was to fall in love with themselves first. Because in order to find your soulmate, you have to become the kind of partner you want to be with. Exactly. And this workshop, uh, Fall in Love with Yourself, have been growing and growing and growing. It also like allows uh, more people to work with me because it's not only singles or people that are in a relationship mm -hmm. that they want to improve. It's more for everyone. I mean, all of us need uh, more self-love. Definitely. And mm -hmm. we are, the relationship with, you, with yourself is the most important relationship that you will ever have in your life. You're and the only one you? you're going to get to know as well as you can. I mean, no, you can't know anyone else as well as you know yourself, yeah. if indeed. But I spend so much time, or I spent, I'm hoping I've changed, yeah. so much time not knowing myself, you know? so. But this is part of the self-love. Mm -hmm. When you go into a date, you want to know everything about the other person. You ask questions, you are present, you are there. But in the relationship with yourself, we kind of figure out that, okay, I know who I am. No, you are not your thoughts. You are not all these ideas that come to your mind. Yeah. You are much more than that. Then part of loving yourself is the best time in knowing who you are. I don't, I don't really care how you do that. There are so many ways through journaling, through inner work, uh, studying your dreams, uh, the neogram, doing your birth chart. Whatever, but invest time in being with you. Let me just tell you, Judith does all of that <laughs> and, and more. <laughs> she has a bunch of tools. You won't believe how many tools that, that, that you, you'll be so aware of yourself by the time she finishes with you. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we only have half an hour. That's, That's true, true. So we, don't, we, won't talk <laughs> yes, we won't talk about all that now. But so, so what I'm hearing you say is that it sort of evolved. It, w it was part of a workshop, mm -hmm. and then you realized it was so important and so missing, I would yeah. suspect, that you it's like, okay, you know what, I need to create an entire workshop around self-love and how to fall in love yeah. with yourself. Yeah, because in the past, nobody talked about self-love. Now there is, uh, well, there are books, people that do workshops in this area, but it was confused between self-care and self-esteem. But these two concepts are totally different. I understand that uh, the idea of loving yourself is more uh, like a bunch of concepts together. I, I like an author called uh, Christina Arillo, that she has a metaphor that I use that uh, self-love is like a tree where it has different branches mm -hmm. and all of these concepts, self-forgiveness, self-acceptance, uh, self-care, self-expression, uh, uh, learning how to set up boundaries are different branches of the tree. And when you work mm. in all of these concepts, at the end the tree becomes bigger and the trunk becomes stronger and you don't have to focus on solving everything, but the love for yourself will transform your life uh, 360 degrees. It will affect every area of your life. If you really want to improve your life, 
start loving yourself. Yeah, easier said than done. <laughs> That's why you have the workshop, I'm sure. But it's I, I find that so often, and I'm, I'm guilty of this also, it's like when you say people don't know themselves, they kind of sit around and wait for people to tell them who they want them to be, you know, and yeah. that could be a job, fitting into a job. Um, oh, let me see what they want me to do, as opposed to, oh, yeah. let me see what I'm great at and excel and bring that to the table. And that's hard. No, it's exactly this because a lot of people get stuck in this moment where maybe they were not raised in a way they, they wanted or they didn't receive the love. And what uh, happens is when, when we grow up, we start looking for ways to receive this love all the time. Then we are able to sacrifice ourselves in order to receive more and more love. And we try to mm. fit, we try to adapt. We try to be in a relationship no matter what, even though it means to sacrifice yourself or to abandon yourself in the relationship. And I know because I did it. I did it very well. <laughs> and that's the reason why I'm teaching this, because mm -hmm. when my life was a mess, I really had to figure out a way to make things work. Because from outside, everybody thinks, oh, you have a great life. You have the husband, you have the house, you have the, the nice job. And I didn't like, uh, things weren't working. And I was feeling miserable then that's the reason why, for example, in one of the lectures that I offer that it's called Loving Yourself is the Solution, I challenge the participants, the attendees, to say, tell me one problem you have, and I will solve it in terms of self-love. Wow. It doesn't matter what it is, financial, relationships, everything. Because the love for yourself will allow you to act in a different way, to choose differently. And mm. it's going to transform your life because you are going to start doing things in a different way. Yeah. It, that's so, that's so interesting, and and this this show is based on points of view, which has a whole bunch of cards, and and the card that Ju Judith chose is solutions. Yeah. So and and I'm not sure. I, I'm I'm thinking that this is how coaching evolved. This whole self love thing, because you're right, and it, certainly for me, you know, you climb the ladder, you come to your ideal dream city, um, you get to the point at the yeah. top where it's like you're making a, a lot of money, and it's like you the prestige. And you still, and I, and I went, oh, something's wrong. I'm not, I'm not having a good time. And it was, it, it had nothing to do with money. It had nothing to do with um, yeah. the status in, in, in the company that I was in. It was like, and I think that's how coaching evolved because that little, that the little feeling, thing, yeah, yeah, that little nudgy feeling. It's <laughs> like, oh, something's just not right here. What, what's wrong? And people can't figure it out. And you're telling me that the solution or the or the, the solution to that little feeling is loving yourself. Yeah, because you change. Yes. Or <laughs> life change you. Uh, life is change. We cannot stop the, the, the cycles. We are here to grow and to learn things. Mm -hmm. Then the idea is that you can design and create the life you want or you will be a victim of your circumstances then I mm. believe that you are not a victim of your circumstances. I believe that you can choose to do whatever you want with your life. And it took me some time to figure out this. Mm. Uh, I, I, told, I told my, uh, my clients, I, I wasn't born this way. <laughs> I, learn, I learn all these things, and by experience, now I can speak about when you are in this moment of, of life, when life throws you something important, like uh, you lose your job, you lose your partner, or you get divorced, you have uh, an illness, or someone you love is in trouble, then you have to have the tools in place. Then is the moment when we look up to whoever is out there that you believe, and you say, please help me. Mm. Then there is a moment where you can help yourself because, of course, the universe has your back and you are always safe. But we enter in this fear mode where everything seems to be difficult. And it's not. We just have to learn how to go with the flow and allow life or the universe or uh, source to guide us through the process. Mm -hmm. And this is not religious. I'm not talking about any concept that uh, is related with any kind of religion. I like that you're using the universe because that includes whatever anybody you know puts their work. faith in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me too. <laughs> but uh, believe that you are here for a reason, that you have a purpose, and that everything you are doing is okay. We are the only ones that are stressed out to achieve more things. And we forget that we, we have, what we have to do is to enjoy the moment, to live in the now, to be present, and to appreciate what we have. How many times you wanted more of something, and you forget what already uh, was here? Yeah. 
and and the more that you get is what you wanted like 10 minutes ago and it was, it was so you were supposed to be happy and they, yet no it's it's on I, I was yeah. giving you that example it's like I'm, I'm at a stage in my career where I keep thinking I should and I hate that word I should go out and really market and get more clients and then I'm going but you know what I really like the pace at which I'm traveling right now and I have to and, and it's not an easy lesson and I don't know I, if all. you have a way to make it easy let me know but it because I have to keep relearning it it's like yeah. relax just relax and enjoy what's going on. Yeah, we were talking uh, uh, about this before mm -hmm. there is a mantra that you can use in in front of every decision in your life then it's to ask yourself, to give yourself permission to decide, to give this a space where you can ask, what is the best decision for me now? Yeah. And you were saying, no, the and now is now important. Now is really <laughs> important, yeah. Yeah, because uh, sometimes we act in auto autopilot. We go through the motions in life and we are so busy just doing that we forget that we have this, this time to choose. And this is the reason why mm. I, I choose the, the card solutions for today, because I want to empower uh, you that are watching us or will see this in the future to tell you that you have a choice. There is always a solution. There is a way. And we are never stuck. We are just stuck in our minds thinking that we cannot see the solution. But the solution is always there. Maybe you just need a different level of consciousness or mm. awareness or just to allow the solution come to you. You don't have to figure out everything. You are not here to find all the solutions, but you can uh, be in a place where you find the confidence inside of yourself. You love yourself enough to allow your life to change and mm. to go where you belong, to go where your dreams are taking you. I love the um, message of you are never stuck. Uh, and the only time I could think of when you might be stuck would be when you're trying to avoid, wh when you're in fear. When you're in fear, it's like then you're trying to avoid pain or, or <laughs> indecision or um, scorn from someone else. Then I think you get stuck, you get paralyzed. Yeah. But uh, I love if, if, if everybody could take that message and go, uh, you're never stuck. So. You know, how and do you get last, out of it, though? <laughs> my last blog, <laughs> and or it was the gift letter that I write. Uh, it's she called. She writes love letters. I <laughs> love it. It's so cool. <laughs> it's called. It's not real, and it mm. explains exactly this. That fear comes in so many ways. It has different faces, but we believe that we are our thoughts, and you are not your thoughts. Your mind is designed to uh, be active, twenty four seven, mm -hmm. and sometimes it has messages that are not nice. Like, you are not going to make it. It's not going to happen to you. Who do you think you are? <laughs> uh, you yes. cannot uh, <laughs> date this guy, or you cannot get this job. Then just uh, practice mindfulness, the art of being uh, present, and be an observer of your thoughts. And see what happens with this fear. What is this monkey mind telling you all the time? And try to separate what is the fear uh, conversation mm -hmm. from who you really are. And this is the idea why this workshop is created, the uh, fall in love with yourself. Mm -hmm. Because what, we'll, what we will do in the workshop is to give you tools to be uh, like ready for real life, how to apply this self-love into your life. I mean, what are the daily acts of love that you can do? How you meditate? How you visualize? What is this thing of mindfulness? Mm. Because love is a concept, but uh, it's more a way of being. It's not a philosophy that I love you so much. No. Yeah. You have to demonstrate that it's more than Valentine's Day, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. that you love someone yeah. so much. Then, mm. if you start with yourself, how are you going to demonstrate this love that you have, that you say you have for yourself? Mm. You have to find ways to do this in a daily basis. Wow. Yeah, and and you have to. I, th I think you have to treat yourself the way you treat someone that you love, and that's yeah. hard. It's like because uh, I don't know. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do the woman card. Women <laughs> are are you know, and I'm sure guys have the same problem. But what well, women are just taught to nurture. That's what you're there for, you know, to help people grow. And it's and it's so. But you got to include yourself in that, and that is hard. Yeah, you have to be your priority in life. You have yeah. to be the number one because let me tell you, you cannot share what you don't have. And if you don't love yourself. It's very difficult, first, that you will recognize the love of someone mm. else coming to you. And it's very difficult that you really will share what we call true love, unconditional love.
Mm. What we are used is to establish relationships where love is conditional. I love you until I divorce you, then I stop loving you. <laughs> then this is not true love. True love doesn't, doesn't hurt. Yeah. True love is not sacrifice, it's yeah. not attachment, it's not loss, it's not desire, it's not physical. It's, it's bigger than that. And it's available for all of us. Then if you are able to become the partner you want to be with, it means that if you love yourself, you are going to be able to establish a relationship with someone with whom you can share this love that you already have. And this mm. is, for me, the definition of a relationship. Two mature individuals that already love themselves. Because this creates relationships with less drama, less need for control, and more idea of growing together. Mm. Does it make sense? It, it definitely makes sense. Um, yeah, I, I want to go back to the now because I think that's so <laughs> important too. It's <laughs> like I, I it, because I I found that for a long time I was holding on to dreams that I had as a, as a younger person, as a child, mm -hmm. even sometimes. And it's like, and I think I don't know if you recommend this in your in your workshop, but I think you have to go back and reevaluate your dreams occasionally yeah. and go, how is this still what I want? You know, and I what I totally do is true. like, yeah, I do some reinvention coaching and, and retirement coaching and it's like it's like well what did you want to be as a child and then it's like okay well how realistic is that now and how can you apply parts of that you don't have to be yeah. um, a firefighter at age 70 now <laughs> but, but how can you you know what can you do for the community yeah. or maybe you can dress up as Smokey the Bear I don't know whatever is going to turn you on but so I think now is it I think it's a constant evaluation is it a constant I'm hearing you say it's mm -hmm. a constant process it's a constant reminder that you, you need to be your priority. Yeah, I have the contrary problem, uh, usually with my clients, that they have dreams that are forgotten and they never uh, rescue yeah. them. Yeah. Then we live lives that uh, are not for us. Mm. Then we feel this nagging thing that you were saying, we feel that uh, we don't belong where we are because we don't. <laughs> and uh, it's very funny how one of the most difficult questions that I ask people, and it shouldn't be, is what do you want to do with the rest of your life? Imagine that you have all the time and all the money you need. What do you want to do? I that's what I, and they go. And people they just freak don't. Out. They've never thought about it, no. or they've always put it aside. Yeah, I agree. That I think that's the most difficult question for people to answer. It's like, what do you want? It's then, like, if what? you love yourself, <laughs> you have to be able to answer this question. Why? Because you, as you said, you reevaluate re the mm -hmm. dreams that those don't apply now. You are, you are not in constant like stress because I wanted to create my company and I didn't, or I wanted to have uh, four children and I only have three, <laughs> or I wanted a mansion and I only live in a, I don't know, in Bel Air in a three bedroom apartment. <laughs> And that sounds good in New York City, but yes, go ahead. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm joking, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's uh, the idea is to ask yourself, what do you want to do? And then feel it inside of you because you will find the energy to move forward when you really commit, when you really feel it inside of yourself. When we say, oh, you have to struggle and you have to work hard, that's not true. The universe will help you. You know that things happen within a divine timing. But when you are committed with what you want, when you love yourself, you will be able to manifest. Why? Because self-love, well, in concrete, love, is the higher vibration that exists. When you are able to vibrate at this higher level, you are able to open the doors of the manifestation process. Then mm. everything happens within a divine time, and that's true, but it happens for you. Then sometimes what we do is we forget to ask for what we want because we don't believe that we can achieve that. We don't believe that we deserve the money or the career or the I love it. husband. We, we forget to ask. I love yeah. that. That's so true. It's like. It's so common. Uh, let me say. And then we say, well, I don't understand. Why didn't this happen? It's like, well, <laughs> you yeah, know. You have, you have a, a lot of people there uh, ready to help you, but they cannot do anything unless you give permission. Mm. Then just sit still, take a piece of paper, relax yourself, put your favorite music, a candle, or uh, whatever you want to do. But sit and think. What do you want to do with the rest of your life? Because it's never, it's never late. It's never late. You, c you can do it any moment. I, I, that, well, I was going to ask you, is, it, is there a certain time when this should be done? Is it, is it the midlife no, crisis? No. Or it, can be, it can be done any moment. Any but I time. hope that we can teach this in the schools. 
Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? To yeah. empower yeah. The, the children and to tell them that they have the power to create their lives. But it doesn't matter if you are uh, 25, 55, or 75. There is, there is always uh, time to believe in your dreams and to make them happen. That, well, how that, th this is all great, and I, I'm loving everything you're saying, but when you do your workshops, I know you do workshops, you do lectures, you do, uh, I think, webinars. You, she does yeah. everything. And, and the little, little. really, if nothing else, go to her website and sign up for the uh, love letters because it's so cool to get a love letter from Judith, and it's always positive. And Thank so, you. <laughs> yeah, do that. That's, I, I love her love letters. I love your love letters. But So when when you're, you're doing this, um, what... What can you get, how can you get people started on this path? Because it's a, a, we both agree, it's a difficult path, both you and I, and, and yeah. I'm not sure I'm on it all the time myself, you know, but yeah. no, me it, too. Took, it took a while, you know, to, to even get to want to be on the path. Uh, I think that the idea, and a lot of people, uh, I think that you have had the same experience uh, coaching people, a lot of people want to change, want to improve their lives, but they don't know how to start. Mm -hmm. Sometimes right. it's a lecture you attend, sometimes it's a book that just plant the seed, and then the whole process is start. My idea is not to have clients for a long time. It's just, that's the reason why I do one-on-one -on -one sessions, but I invite people to attend this one-day workshop or this three-day retreat or seven-day retreat because I want to give you all the tools and then you have to apply them in your life. This is not a process where I have like the magic and I touch you. Where you have the solution and I will give it to you. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> then you are going to be able to find your solutions because you will have a set of tools. You will have the tools, yeah. To apply yeah. them into your life. Yeah. And you will see how your life is more enjoyable. You become happier and happier. Because this is not about uh, being spiritual. Uh, this is about living the life you want. Mm. Then when we say solutions, it's true. Uh, the solution you want it's in the idea of how you treat yourself, improve this relationship with yourself. But also in your finances, if you are able to manifest, you will have access to a better job, to more money, and this will simplify your life, you will get more help. Mm -hmm. If we are talking about relationships, we, we said it before, if you love yourself, you will have a different kind of partner, and you will attract people uh, around you that will love you the way you are. They are not going to be self-judgmental, I mean, judge you or criticize you. And you're going to stop doing this with yourself. Then a lot of people just suffer, not because the circumstances of their life, it's because they make themselves miserable every day. If I'm telling myself 20 times per day that I'm not good enough, uh, there is no way I can be happy. Mm. It's so difficult because I'm putting myself down. I'm beating myself every mistake that I think I make. It's repeated like 10 times. Then the love for yourself is not something that you need when everything is going well. It's <laughs> right. something you need when you feel that life is, is not the way you want. Mm. And you know that I have an important illness now, that I, I'm, I'm going through difficulties in my life. And at the same time, I have to say that this is one of the best moments of my life. And if people know the, we don't have time now, but <laughs> if people will know the details, we say, oh, maybe she is crazy. I mean, she's <laughs> not aware of what is she going through. No, it's that now that I get that the love for myself is, is, is like this uh, bamboo that is really rooted. And even though when the wind moves it, it comes back like it's a palm. Always, yeah, but yeah. Then you can come back to balance no matter what, how the reality uh, how difficult it is your reality, you can come back to balance. It's so interesting that you said, I just watched um, an interview with Richard Pryor, who was like the king of comedy, the king of sharp comedy, and um, of wildlife, drugs, and imprisonment, and set himself on fire, just a crazy man, but very brilliant. And he got MS, and they said, well, if I, and they were doing word association, and, and they said MS, and he said gift. And they go, gift. And he yeah. says, because it made, me, it made me stop. It made me stop and pause yeah. and, and think about, you know, I had never stopped. I just kept running and running and running. So I that, feel that's, the same. Right? It's like, stop. Yeah. It's exactly yeah. the same because even though I was teaching self-love, there were certain things in my life that I needed to change. 
And now I'm devoting time for myself. I'm working and learning uh, about Ayurveda and tra traditional Chinese medicine. I'm doing yoga and Qigong at home. And um, I have learned some healing modalities. And let me tell you that if, if what happened to me didn't happen, I will never devote it this time mm. to go deeper yeah. and to transform myself. And I think that I have been doing this because in order to work with others, I really need to, to have this balance. And, and you know that I, I do consultations on the Akashic Records and all of this, then I have to be at a level where I feel I can help others in the best possible way. But this has been an, a, a real opportunity to focus on myself. And at the same time, I'm here. I continue helping others. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm happy. <laughs> Which is amazing. Uh, and for the, there are, it's funny because I was going to say, what do you do with people, and it used to be me, who don't trust happiness, who think, okay, well, I'm happy now, but I'm going to have to pay for it later. I, as a child, yeah. I had such a crazy childhood. I went, you know what? I'm cool. I've, my debt's paid. And that wasn't true at all. <laughs> it's like there was I, more in store. And that's a hard that's thing. It's like I've, a balance. You wanted, when you say balance, I'm thinking of a balance sheet. Okay, I was happy for three days. Now I'm going to be hat sad. Mm -hmm. How do you get over that? That I was a pessimistic too. Yeah, yeah. Then well, no, I think I I called it realist, but <laughs> but you know what? Because we have this idea that happiness mm -hmm. comes from external circumstances. Uh huh. Then yes, yes. It, okay. it doesn't last. Yeah. Because tomorrow cannot happen the same mm -hmm. way, or maybe you're not going to have the money or the partner or the. Then you are putting your happiness in the hands of someone else, ah, and then okay. you are Great you are still point. suffering. Great the real point. happiness yeah. is the happiness that comes from within. And why? Because happiness, like self-love, mm. is a daily decision. You choose to be happy. Mm. It doesn't depend from the external circumstances. And let me tell you that happiness and self-love are totally interrelated. And that's the so. reason I created the retreat, the one-week retreat that yeah. is called Loving Your Way to Happiness. Because then, uh, in this retreat, you get like the manual of instructions. Have you asked life for a manual? Like, please <laughs> tell me how I have to live <laughs> my life. Instructions, please. <laughs> I don't yeah. get it. Yeah. <laughs> then there are instructions. <laughs> they are just uh, around you. Maybe, maybe you need someone that has put them together and offer it to you. But there are instructions for life. Well, let me, let me tell you a few reasons, because we only have like 45 seconds left. A few reasons why you should definitely check out her website. One, she's a phenomenal person. She does Akashic Records. She does numerology. She does coaching. She does all of this. But she also, she's, she's international. She is in, she's doing a, a retreat in Spain. She's, she's East Coast, West Coast. Uh, she's based in Miami, but that means nothing. She goes all Love over the travel. world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she likes to travel, and she will be there. So do, I would say, please, um, she's, she's an evolution. She's constantly evolving and improving the coaching skills. Check out uh, Judith's website, and if for no other reason than to get her super cool uh, love letters. <laughs> it's so <laughs> nice. You. What do you do, them once a week? No, they give letters once a month and also oh, the okay. blog, but I love to write. Okay. So thank you so much for thank sharing you. once again. And you're always such a delight to have on. Thank you, Judith. It has been a pleasure. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Thank you.